Interference Consider a ball needle S1 moving periodically on the surface of water. This source will generate same quality waves periodically in all directions. If we look at the side view, the waves will look in this way. The waves have crust and troughs repeating periodically. The maximum height of the head or trough is known as amplitude of the wave. Since this wave is periodic in nature, it will have a phase angle. The phase angle at this point is 0, this point is pi by 2, this point is pi, this point is 3 pi by 2 and this point is 2 pi and so on. Therefore, we can say that one complete wave will have a phase angle of 2 pi. Also, the distance between two successive crust or two successive troughs is known as wavelength of the wave lambda. The displacement or the height of the wave at any instance is given by y is equal to a sin omega t where a is the amplitude of the wave and omega is the angular frequency at time t. Now consider a situation where there are two ball needles separated by a small distance and the balls move periodically up and down in an identical fashion on the surface of water. These two sources produce a system of circularly propagating waves which superpose on each other during their travel. Let us mark all crests by red color and all troughs by green color. Consider a point P on the surface such that it is at equal distances from the sources S1 and S2. That is, S1P is equal to S2P. Since the distances are equal, the waves coming from S1 and S2 will take the same time to reach point P. Therefore, the waves will arrive in phase. The word in phase here means that the displacement of one wave at point is equal to the displacement of another wave at the same point. If the displacement produced by the source S1 at point P is given by Y1 is equal to A sin omega t, since the wave from S2 travels same distance as wave from S1, the displacement is also given by Y2 is equal to A sin omega t. The resultant displacement at P will be given by Y is equal to Y1 plus Y2 which is equal to 2A sin omega t. Since the intensity of a wave is directly proportional to the square of its amplitude, if I0 is the intensity of the individual wave, then I0 is directly proportional to A square. Then the resultant intensity is given by I divided by I0 is equal to 4A square divided by A square. Therefore, I is equal to 4I0. That is, the resultant intensity is 4 times the individual intensity. This type of interference where there is an increase in intensity is called constructive interference. Now consider another point Q such that it is at a distance of 7 wavelengths from source S1 and at a distance of 5 wavelengths from S2. Then S1Q minus S2Q is equal to 2 lambda. This means that the waves coming from S1 will arrive exactly 2 cycles later than the waves from S2. If displacement produced by S1 is given by Y1 is equal to A sin omega t, since the path difference of 2 lambda corresponds to a phase difference of 4 pi, the displacement produced by S2 will be given by Y2 is equal to 
a sin omega t plus 4 pi which is equal to a sin omega t. The two displacements are again in phase and the resultant displacement is equal to y is equal to 2a sin omega t and intensity i is equal to 4i0. This gives rise to constructive interference. Let us consider another point R such that it is at a distance of 7.25 wavelengths from S1 and 9.75 wavelengths from S2. Then S1R minus S2R is equal to minus 2.5 lambda. This means that waves from S1 will arrive exactly 2.5 cycles earlier than the waves from S2. If displacement produced by the source S1 is given by Y1 is equal to A sin omega t, since the path difference of 2.5 lambda corresponds to a phase difference of 5 pi, the displacement produced by S2 will be given by Y2 is equal to A sin omega t minus 5 pi. This is equal to minus A sin omega t. Therefore, the resultant displacement at point R is given by Y is equal to Y1 plus Y2 which is equal to 0. Due to zero amplitude, the intensity will also be equal to zero. Such type of interference where amplitude and intensity is zero or minimum is called destructive interference. Overall, we can say that two coherent sources S1 and S2 vibrating in same phase will produce constructive interference at a point P whenever the path difference is integral multiple of lambda that is S1P minus S2P is equal to N lambda where N is an integer. Similarly, we can obtain destructive interference at point P whenever the path difference between them is S1P minus S2P is equal to N plus half into lambda where N is an integer. Consider another case where the waves coming from coherent sources S1 and S2 are in phase but their amplitudes are different. Let the amplitude of waves from S1 be A1 and S2 be A2. Consider an arbitrary point A. If the displacement produced by source S1 at this point is Y1 is equal to A1 sin omega t and the displacement produced by the source S2 at this point is Y2 is equal to A2 sin omega t plus phi. Here phi is the phase difference between the waves. The resultant displacement at that point due to these two waves is y is equal to y1 plus y2. This is equal to a1 sin omega t plus a2 sin omega t plus phi. After simplification, we get y is equal to a1 plus a2 cos phi into sin omega t plus a2 cos omega t into sin phi. Now, let us take a1 plus a2 cos phi as r cos theta and a2 sin phi as r sin theta. If we substitute these values, we get y is equal to r cos theta sin omega t plus r sin theta cos omega t. Now take r common. Using this formula, this expression can be written as y is equal to r sin omega t plus theta. This equation represents the displacement of the resultant wave. Here r is called the resultant amplitude and theta is the phase angle between the first wave and the resultant wave at that point. 
Now let us find the resultant amplitude at that point. For that square and add these two expressions. After simplification we get r is equal to square root of a1 square plus a2 square plus 2a1 a2 into cos phi. Now using this expression we can find out the resultant amplitude. Similarly using the formula tan theta is equal to a2 sin phi divided by a1 plus a2 cos phi we can find out the phase angle theta of the resultant wave at that point. Now using these equations we can also derive general expressions for resultant displacement, amplitude and phase angle at an arbitrary point P when amplitude of waves from S1 is equal to S2. That is when A1 is equal to A2 is equal to A the resultant amplitude equation can be written as r square is equal to 2a square plus 2a square cos phi. r square is equal to 2a square into 1 plus cos phi. We know that 1 plus cos phi is equal to 2 cos square phi by 2. Therefore, the above expression becomes r square is equal to 2a square into 2 cos square phi by 2. Therefore, r square becomes equal to 4a square cos square phi by 2. Now, taking square root, finally, we get r is equal to 2a cos phi by 2. The resultant displacement at point P is given by y is equal to r sin omega t plus theta. Substituting for r in this equation we get y is equal to 2a cos phi by 2 into sin omega t plus theta. Now let's find the resultant intensity at an arbitrary point p. Since intensity is directly proportional to square of amplitude, i0 is directly proportional to a square. Therefore, Resultant intensity IR is directly proportional to 4A square cos square phi by 2. Let's divide these two equations. We get IR divided by I0 is equal to 4A square cos square phi by 2 divided by A square. After simplification, we get IR is equal to 4I0 cos square phi by 2. This is the general equation to find intensity at arbitrary point P when phase difference between the waves reaching the point P is phi. Due to all these interferences, we see high amplitudes at all these points where crest of one wave meets crest of another wave and all these points where troughs of one wave meets the trough of another wave. Similarly, we can see zero amplitude at all these points where crest of one wave meets trough of another wave. 